So, who has uh, heard of TypeScript before? One, two, three. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, it's not such a bad topic then. Cool. <laughs> who has been writing softwares in JavaScript? Sorry? Could be anything. Yeah. Software. Yeah. <laughs> Still software. Uh, and I have been doing it for, for like the uh, last six, seven years now. I'm writing using JavaScript for front end as well as for back end. And uh, I faced some challenges while doing, uh, while working with JavaScript. Okay. And I, I would like you to uh, share that. Uh, pain with you. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so if, if for those who don't know what JavaScript is, uh, it's a it's a uh, simple uh, scripting language. Okay, that is integrated in most of the browsers. The mainstream uh, use of JavaScript initially was only for UI side, but then when uh, 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 Node.js came into picture, it has transformed JavaScript use from only from UI side to the server side and mainstream programming. And who uses it? As we said, developers just like us, right? It's, it's made for humans, but still sometimes it feels like it's not for humans. Uh, and why? Uh, because of its dynamic nature, it's very powerful. Right, it's very easy. There's there's a very uh, less learning curve because it's C-like language, and everyone who starts with programming has some understanding of C language or the, or the syntax of C. That's why it's it's very similar and easy and easy to understand. <coughs> and what are the problems that you guys faced while working with JavaScript? But or, or did you ever face any problems working with JavaScript? Debugging. Debugging. Yeah. And the compilation errors, compilation errors are only a runtime, uh, yeah, runtime. Yeah. Refactoring. Refactoring support is not there. That's right. Right. That, that's true. Callback hell. Yes, it is there. <laughs> promise. Yeah. You just give promises. No one knows when it's gonna fulfill. Yeah. It's, it's like dating for years and years and then you don't know what's going to happen. You're always under that threat. Is she going to marry me? <laughs> so, so that's what happens. I mean, there is so much unpredictability while you're developing code as well as when the product code is in the production. But, but at the same time, I love JavaScript because it's such a simple language to, to just begin with as well as uh, it's too dynamic. You can do so many things with it. <clears throat> but what if there is a, a way to improve the improve on what we already have? And uh, TypeScript provides you support for those kind of uh, uh, problems. And the problems that you guys discussed, which, which are uh, it's not type safe, right? Uh, for example, take a look at this code. What what should be the answer of uh, C? It's pretty simple, right? It's, Nine. Yeah. Why forty? It's it's nine. Sorry. Yeah, but anyways, then uh, one of my colleagues just came in and uh, because we are working in a team, right? Uh, he just decided to write this line of code. It's perfectly fine. No one gives you error until it fails in production. Yeah. And I'll just scratch my head. Hey, it was working yesterday. What happened to it today? And then imagine this is hundreds of lines of code in a minified JS. <laughs> then good luck debugging it. Yeah. Uh, it can easily become complex. Do you mean doing A plus plus on this thing will return an error? Yeah. Yes, yes. It, it, it will give error as soon as you do that. Correct. Exactly. It will fail in compiling. It won't. It, 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 it won't fail in compile because there is no compilation happening. Yes. Correct. Uh, but but the the but you won't get that error unless you see that code running in a browser, 
and only if that particular uh, uh, path has been taken by the code if they let's say there was a condition and that path is only taken once a while that is not covered by any test then you are gone right so it can easily become complex so who has uh, written any object oriented javascript yeah does it look something like this so you can see it ah unfortunately if i increase the font it won't fit in the slide should i increase the contrast <laughs> hang on don't worry what i'll do is i'll show it in sublime show that in sublime yeah Yeah, I'm opening in Sublime. Uh, yeah, but it will run out of slide. Then. Uh, so this is a simple code for inheritance or, or extending a class. And such a beautiful code, right? So many curly braces, so many underscores, so many prototype uh, things going on. And I, I don't know what's happening over it. It's although when when writing it feels wow, it's so easy to just inherit any class because it's so dynamic. You know, meta programming and all that. But when you just look at that code after one month, you don't know what's happening. So. <coughs> This is one of the problem. Yeah. Let's do one thing. Let me stop the mirror. Here. Excuse me. <clears throat> so it it can easily become complex, right? Um, then it's again hard to keep track of context. Who has been doing self is equal to this? everyone right you have to do this you can't run away from that if you don't do it you won't get the right context and sometimes you can simply miss it yeah can you read this <coughs> no okay let me again take this in the sublime then that's actually could some of the guys come in front of me because there's is an entire space in the view why don't you come in front of me Is there a slide PowerPoint slide plugin for Sublime? <laughs> so, uh, what do you think? What's wrong with this code? Is there anything wrong? Yes, and this here has, does not have any meaning, right? Because this, as soon as you enter into this function, the scope of this has changed. So that means for this function, this is this function. It is not the uh, the outer function, correct? Right. And this is a very common mistake that. I have done countless times, and then you have to figure out. Okay, hang on, let me correct that. But to get that feedback, you have to wait until you run the code. Right? <clears throat> so this is uh, uh, I call it con uh, I like to call it context hell because it takes hell. As you just go into deep, and then you suffer uh, uh, throughout the feedback cycle of the code. <coughs> so, uh, why is it a long feedback cycle? Because you can't catch errors while you're writing code. You don't get uh, to know about the mistake that you did unless you run it. And there can be many. You can miss any path that your code is taking while running it, and so you can realize about the errors after a long, long time. 
<clears throat> and some in some cases you won't even get any error if you're working with js and callbacks and some pro, <laughs> sub callbacks might be completely eaten up by node js and you won't get any errors from it uh, and it's difficult to debug the minified js as some of my friends already said now how type typescript can help us let's see what it brings to the table so what is typescript uh, in in a single in a single sentence i would say typescript is a superset of javascript what does it mean is it it provides you uh, it, it provides you a way to write clean javascript by adding some functionality over javascript or some added syntactical sugar over javascript all the code that you write in javascript is totally valid typescript because it is superscript of superset of javascript and because it is superset there is no learning curve at all you can immediately start using it without learning any new syntax but the real benefit of uh, uh, typescript uh, will come when you start adding types into it that way you will get static type checking with the static compilation so in your editor if you are if you are trying to use any function uh, or a method on a particular <coughs> object which is not there it will immediately throw you an error just like your java language or any statically typed language that way your feedback cycle will immediately reduce uh, while you are writing code <coughs> and as i said it provides syntactical sugar all the code that you are using to uh, create ojs or uh, a, a browser safe os uh, uh, browser safe js it will it will be reduced although it will add you will have to write code for adding types to the typescript classes but in the long run if you see your code will look much cleaner and you you don't have to write complex code and and when we'll see that there is no uh, uh, you are not going to handle the various scopes you are not going to handle <coughs> prototype related functionality your code will immediately start becoming readable for it let me let me show an example of a typescript okay strange one what are they i want single route but i want to see the files sidebar show open files and then it's here okay not this one Drag from there for you to this. You want to do the same. Yeah. So I am completely open a new project now, so that way I can simply show you. Uh, I don't know why this plugin is asking me to do this. Come on. Yeah. So look at this class. Okay. This is a clean JavaScript. Oh God. Okay. It has constructor. It has class. If you want to extend this class, you can easily extend it into uh, another class, and that's it. You don't have to worry about all the uh, prototype hierarchy and how you are adding the functionality. Something wrong. Why is it asking me to do this? Yeah. Is it clean? Is it readable? I mean, the code that I showed you uh, previously is the exact. It is doing the same thing. Uh, some something wrong with some. some okay. Now it it should not ask. I have created the sublime uh, sublimate file. It is still asking me to do it. Okay, leave it. Can I disable the plugin? 
okay let's let's dive in dive it in later but what i wanted to show you is an example of how a simple hierarchy would look like in typescript uh, it is scalable now what i mean by scalable it will not help you to scale the functionality uh, or the ability of your server to handle many requests what it will help you is if you are working on very large javascript project you can easily separate it into various modules like frameworks uh, uh, a module framework like common js or md js that way you can easily keep track of your classes you can easily separate the functionality in respective files and you can use it effectively because all those module frameworks are inherently supported in typescript can you see those are it can understand when you say import some module it can understand what you want to do so then it can even understand the class and all yes so uh, yeah it, it it provides you uh, a very good level of encapsulation with using classes interfaces uh, as well as simply type definitions and with that you can build your code in such a modular way that it, when you look at just the file system or this the sidebar of your solution you can know what's going to happen here and this can still stay at the development mode and you can when you are actually generating a mini js uh, uh, all these things will go away and it will generate a clean js file for you now because of its static type nature it provides the ability to write better software tools uh, so that better id support because i know where each uh, function belongs to which class i can easily provide you refactoring support i can keep track of scope so i can easily uh, uh, navigate between various objects i can rename refactor uh, uh, i can find the references and i can give you stat uh, static uh, error checking yeah i can even provide you end license which was very difficult when you when you were using javascript and that's why you will find that there is not a single id who provides you uh, top class support for javascript it, i mean there are support but you can't say that it's 100% accurate yeah so this is what uh, uh, it you can uh, i can it also supports generating source maps that way you can directly debug from your uh, uh, you can debug to your uh, actual typescript file okay even though your output is minified js or or generated js if you put breakpoint into typescript file your breakpoint will hit over there because of the advantage of source map source map file generation so we'll we'll go through we'll we we'll see demo of each of it so uh, Let's first understand the concepts what what it is trying to tell us, <coughs> uh, and this is the solution to context hell problem because now you don't have to track the context. Uh, so with the ability of anonymous functions, it can you can easily pass in any lambda, and then that lambda will have the scope of the actual calling functions that you, that you want it it to have. Uh, best part is it's open source, so community. can make it even better and we have already seen that there are so many uh, uh, contributors to this project so when this initially started in microsoft research uh, uh, it was in the uh, it, it was in the preview mode but as as it went to open source immediately people started contributing it fixed lots of its issues and uh, we we saw that last year it that they released typescript 1.0 which is now uh, officially supported version in many ides um one of the best part about javascript is it compiles uh, typescript is it compiles to ecmascript 6 uh, specification of javascript so that the java javascript output that you will get or the javascript that, javascript that you are seeing is compatible or it's made for future it's compatible for future so all the all the types like classes interfaces all these features are coming in ec6 and you will already start using them when you use typescript 
it it is adopting many modern language features such as uh, 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 generics so in java script it's not possible to add generics but with typescript you can do that you can have optional uh, uh, default parameters optional parameters and, and so many things so let's dive into some re, uh, some code okay so java uh, javascript provides us types like string right number boolean and object and arrays yeah and typescript provide you exactly those things it doesn't provide you anything extra because it has to compile to javascript but uh, this is how you will see that you can create a variable of certain type so is done is a variable of type boolean so with colon and then specifying the type you can tell your editor that i want to use this variable as boolean so if i try to assign string value to it my editor will uh, throw me an error then there are string the array and this is another uh, syntax for defining array which is using generics this way you can create any uh, array of complex type as well and your compiler will keep track of it so uh so it's so when you say when you just look at the typescript it is totally new language but it compiles to java so just the way our java code or groovy code compiles to your byte code right uh it compiles to java script compile uh, contact yes because once it is compiled that your browser is not seeing typescript browser doesn't understand typescript what browser understand is the javascript so once you get the output you are going to serve that output for your production code so so when you deploy you compile the javascript and you deploy yes uh, like uh, uh, so yeah you compile to javascript and then deploy so it's like compile then minify and then deploy. you can do minification yeah compile and minify and then the deploy so it's it's same as coffee script right it, it also compile it generates javascript and that's what you say in the browser or gwt it create it creates the javascript the and then is, uh, i think it happens at runtime and sometimes it is slow right so uh, uh, not really runtime uh, it 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 it, 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 it compiles yeah so yeah. javascript so it is here it is one time you have yes you. correct now there are additional types like enumerations okay um then you have uh, a any type right it is like object in java and this allows you to uh, get benefit out of the dynamic nature of javascript so we are not getting taking away any good features of javascript it is still there but it is like a two uh, 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 two headed sword you can cut your hand as well if you don't you do use dynamics properly so i usually discourage use of any but if you want to use it you can still use it uh, then you have uh, uh, a special type which is called as void and you will use that when function is not returning anything and all these type annotations are completely unnecessary but if you don't do, if you don't give those types your editor won't understand what type you want to use okay although it has type inference as well for example uh here if i don't uh, oh sorry if here if i don't put color type here okay for c and if i'm assigning value color dot green to it it will automatically understand that i want to use that variable as color and then from that point onwards editor will start tracking it as color so this type inference built in now let's let's take a look at interfaces okay uh, interface is a very very important concept in uh, uh, typescript because i would say everything is built around it around the interfaces because interfaces are treated as contracts and how 
a particular object is conforming to contract is decided based on the structural typing or it is also called as duct typing so if class uh, uh, class animal right ha has a method walk that means it can follow interface i walkable uh, or just walkable interface you don't have to explicitly say that this class is implementing that interface typescript is automatically going to check whether if you are whenever you are trying to pass that animal into walkable if it supports all the methods and member of walkable then it is it is safely cast to walkable so um, this is called as structural typing or duct typing so it's like typical structural typing in um read to same parameter yes. parameter yeah written type program correct but you can also have additional features as well i mean yes. yeah so here i can define an interface uh, uh, as you would do it in java uh, with the with the keyword interface then the name of the interface and all the members which will come in that interface and then you see here that let's say i have a function right which is draw shape it takes parameter right and while while creating this function i only need to tell it that it has to have shape i don't care what object it is but it has to follow the contract which is shape so that i can use color member on it and if you try to pass something else your compiler will throw error so this way you will you will uh, uh, <clears throat> you will not enjoy the guessing game as you would do in uh, when using javascript frameworks for example when chinmay was showing you casper torjes you don't know what method it is as i said he has to go to documentation and check what syntax it is what mem uh, what parameters does it take uh, uh, am i giving any wrong parameter to it right but with this statically typing you can get benefit you don't have to do that you don't have to play the guessing game Uh, i can i can even specify just the structure that i am expecting instead of specifying the interface name so here i am saying that i want a parameter with uh, which has to have color uh, member in it a color property in it so here i am not specifying any interface i am only specifying the structure of the argument that i am expecting Uh, now interfaces uh, can be also applied to a function because functions are the first class citizen in JavaScript, and that's why uh, you will see that there are interfaces for function as well. So what this uh, particular interface is telling me that this is a interface on function because there are uh, um, brackets or round brackets surround uh, surrounding the parameters. So this is a function which takes a parameter called as message of time string and returns boolean and then i can use this interface wherever i am trying to use the higher order functions yeah kind of similar. so here let's say this is a function called as get data and one error i just want to invoke error callback now what that error callback is this is the definition of error uh, this is the uh, definition of error call back that it has to take message and should return boolean and it, and you will see that suddenly your code becomes so elegant and readable and i can safely say invoke the error here with the string argument i mean how many time did you guys use uh, 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 or saw, try to see the jquery documentation while calling jquery ajax which parameter goes where what are the error does error comes first or does data comes first right i had to do it all the time i couldn't ever remember what comes first and this way i can call this uh, uh, function by passing it the argument uh, or the callback function which says alert message and uh, it is following the same constraints which are provided, which are specified by my contract correct although it is not exactly 100% accurate because i am not returning anything from this function 
so this this comparison fail i just spot this mistake so so you, you will see that our contract says that it should return boolean right but here i am not returning any boolean boolean from this function no it will fail i mean so uh, yeah uh, one uh, one interesting thing is even though your compilation is failing you are always getting javascript output so that way if you want to live with the errors you are you are still fine you will still be able to generate your mini pages and you will still be able to run your test with the rest of it you might have done that to support other libraries to import and all uh yeah let's let's talk about that later but yeah uh at it could be initially when they are developing typescript that was their intention uh but sometime it helps uh, to get the uh, error output and understand what's happening over here just for education purpose if i i, I wrote error ness typescript what will be the output now <coughs> let's take a look at classes so you can declare classes with uh, uh keyword class right uh, which follows Uh, which followed which is followed by the class name and then the curly brackets you will see that here i can even specify a constructor yeah and constructor can take uh, a number a number of argument you can specify uh, the class members but one thing you will have to, you you will see here that to access all the class member i have to use this keyword i cannot simply say greeting over here because the scope it it needs to track the scope of the variable that's why you need to specify this or and you can create instance of your class uh, with a new keyword okay, you have to define like a tag uh, so it's also inferred yes it is inferred in the, the in this grid method right yeah it is inferred so whenever i'll try to look up for grid it will tell me that this grid function returns a string now if you want to implement an interface you could simply say uh, uh, implements interface just like java it's much similar to java right java and scala and c they have mixed all the languages uh, <clears throat> okay uh, if you want to extend from from an existing class or an interface you can do it with the extends keyword yeah and then to access your super you will use super you will use super keyword to access any methods from your super class so here i uh, all the functions of or functions and members of the cat will be accessible uh, so there are only two types of accessors right which is public and private uh, although it is not really private but it's private for the scope of programming and then uh, there is nothing called as just protected which is only accessible to your brain Default. Uh, default is public. So as you saw that the greet method did not have any access specifier. Um, so let's let's dive into functions because they they can be interesting sometimes. So to define a function, you you can use. Uh, a fu a function keyword but that is again optional you can simply say add and it will still work and then you can specify the uh, arguments with the types and at the end you can even specify the return type of the function with the columns if, even if you don't specify any of this the the compiler will try to infer the types now the second type of function is the anonymous function where you don't specify uh, start the function with the name so here it just an anonymous anonymous function which is just line of code and then you are assigning that anonymous function to a variable called as my add yeah now parameters uh, you can specify optional parameters with question mark yeah that means you can you can call this build name either by passing just by the first name or by passing first name and last name and you can also have a specify default parameter uh, uh when uh, in conjunction with the optional parameter if you want to have it you will just say last name is equal to smith 
and then you can still call this built-in function with just first name and it will automatically take the value of last name from this default uh, value now it becomes more interesting when you involve generics right <coughs> you can do uh, now suddenly the whole whole uh, uh, new new door of having different design patterns is open to javascript so now you can implement so many design patterns which are talk which are talking through contracts and generics and you, you can implement whatever you were doing with any standard object oriented programming language uh, like java or c sharp so to <coughs> you can use t to specify a generic type and if you want to put some constraint on the generic type you can do that as well here i'm making sure that the t that i'm going to get here it has to extend from length wise Nothing. Nothing today. Like JavaScript doesn't have anything the runtime generic nature. So it's just till the compiler. Yes, this is only for the compilation time because like JavaScript doesn't understand T, right? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> and as I said, you can have uh, uh, you can manage your large JavaScript project with the help of modules. Uh, by default, uh, there is. Uh, there's uh, uh, one module type which is called as internal module. Okay, this you can use while writing your code only from the only from the client perspective, right? Let's say you are your JavaScript uh, JavaScript is only going to get executed in the browser for for client side. Then you can use this kind of module structure. Yeah, it doesn't require any additional libra libraries like require JS or common uh, uh, libraries. This is in supported by the language itself. So, if I want to access this particular class, I will have to say uh, expert class dot session. So, this is giving you a way to organize your code. Yeah. Now, you are not just dependent on separating into file, but even in one file, you can organize your code with different modules. Even I can write the module in any other file. Yeah, you can still access it. So. No, so because now here when you are using internal modules, right? It understand if when you are not importing anything, right? You use import uh, to import libraries, right? Or external modules, but that you will use when you are working with server side code, like as in Node.js. But when you are using only client side, ultimately it's one JavaScript file, so it doesn't need anything. Uh, extra. It is kind of a namespace. Can I have a class that is writing on the JavaScript file? Yes, and, and you can still refer to it. Yes. Yeah, just like logical namespaces. Yes. So uh, in my uh, another class, you know, uh, the JavaScript file, I just have to say module, module name, and then. Yeah, and all the two classes will be available for you. What is the meaning of export? Uh, so it will come. It will. It will. Uh, uh, so export means I want this class to be visible from outside of this module. Okay. If you don't put export, you will not be able to see that class from outside of the module. When you say outside of the module, outside of the, the file. No, no, outside of the module, not the file. Oh, okay. Even. Oh. Right. What is the use of the module? For the log. For the logical separation, right? So let's say if I don't export a module, uh, so you might want you might you might still want to have private classes which are already only relevant for that internal module, which are not visible to your module. Yeah. Let's let's say I'm building a library, right? Uh, a public library, and I only want to expose certain number of APIs to the outside world. They won't be able to see all the private classes in my uh, module. Finally, it's all about JavaScript. Yes, uh, uh, but yeah, but but no, you can still create uh, privates by writing some hack JavaScript, which is not accessible from server. So if you don't put anything on the prototype, right, it is not directly accessible from the object of that function. So at least protected. I can use it very very bad way. I can achieve it. Yes.
<laughs> now there there is another way to create mo uh, use modules is the uh, it is called as external modules there are two kinds of uh, external module framework that typescript support which is or the specification of the framework so there is common js specification and there is amd specification and at the compile time you can tell it which kind of uh, 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 not compile time but as a con compile uh, compile configuration you can tell it what kind of modules are you working with do you want to be use your modules as common js specifications or amd specification so for example uh, take a look at this line so it is saying that i, I am re i require this module okay if you are using common js then it will start looking uh, for the file with this name okay and that file will not have any word like module because the com because common js specification just converts the whole file into one module and all the classes which are there they are export they are available for that module as in node js you you would see that and that way all the classes which are there in that file are now uh, uh, aliased with this particular uh, uh, module name the advantage uh, of this is let's say uh, me and chinmay are building one one uh, library right he has the similar functions as well as i have the same some functions with the same name and and if you and you are the person who is using both of our files or both of our javascript files then you can decide under which name every module uh, every class should go right this gives you more ability to uh, have a module uh, def define the module structure for your project now uh, what if we have so many js libraries should should we throw them all away and start using typescript library no what you can do is you can only create uh, a definition file for all those libraries and then you tell compiler about your definition file and the runtime implementation of the definition can be your js file and what people have done is uh, uh, they have uh, created the definition files for all the popular frameworks not all but more than 500 popular frameworks <laughs> so anything you can think today has a has a definition file there's a definition for angular uh, file for casper for phantom for ember yeah casper what is the meaning of thing what exactly mean this definition file yes so definition file only declares the types so here i am not creating a class i'm just declaring a class which should look like this it will have a parameterless constructor and it will have a public method flag this is a definition this is not an implementation right so real implementation will be by by the actual library, the actual library. yes but consider a scenario like you know a kind of sencha right so they do have a thing and we have a definition for that mm -hmm. but later they update their api with a more classes of functions yes. right mm -hmm. and so and we are using we want to use the updated one right mm -hmm. so either we have to wait for type script to come with the latest version of uh, you know, the definition file or yeah it's a drop ever it can be done no no you don't have to wait because there is a tool whenever you can generate you want to generate you can generate it so, so we have to go and we have to scan that and which files of which which classes or method we are going to use in our project and we have to append this definition no no you can to that tool you can completely pass in a javascript file and it will generate a definition file for you okay yeah right but this will so if it can if it can infer the type it will infer it but if it cannot infer the type it will put any that means your code will still work for all the new functionality is added it will still work but then you will not get any get any advantage of having it as a typescript file so it's always better to the owner or the Uh, yeah, but but because it's community driven, people are really quick about it. And whenever there is a new framework, people just add new type definitions to it. And you can find all those type definitions on this definitely type dot org site. So, for example, uh, yeah. So this is a <coughs> uh, uh, if you want to learn more about TypeScript. 
you can go to typescriptlang.org you can play with an interactive editor over there which will uh, show you a typescript and a compiled version of it uh, of that typescript side by side and for all the uh, definition libraries you can go to definitely type.org so let's let's see what does type definition look like So this is not, not this one. This is definitely types GitHub repository. Yeah, and I was just going through Phantom JS definition. How does it look and all? So there are so many uh, libraries or definitions already available for this framework. You can just scroll through them, find whatever you want, you are interested in, and just get it. Uh, there is a if you are using uh, .NET. There is a support. There's a NuGet package for every definition, so you can uh, uh, easily import all these definition into your project, and they can be updated with versions. I am sure there is something uh, for for Bower as well. Yeah, uh, too many definitions, and uh, to refer. Yeah, this is one of the parts. So let's say, so, so I think someone asked the question, right? What if my classes are split between files and all that? How my uh, compiler will understand that this particular class is using another class? So you can uh, you can put this line at the top of your file to tell compiler that I am referring to this particular file. So, if you are looking up for any classes or function, also consider this file for that lookup. So it's, like it's like an import statement in, in Java when you are importing. But, but, I mean, so here it's definite. It can be definition. It can be a class. But here it's a file name. So that file name can can hold many classes. Can hold any definitions. So basically, it's a file uh, saved in a dot t dot t s. No, no. TypeScript files get saved with only .ts, but here it's the definition file, and I think and uh, this is the uh, 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 this is the standard for storing creating the definition file. Uh, so all the definition file will end up with .d.ts. So uh, this is what the uh, .d.ts and then. Uh, it's supposed to uh, be uh, no, so, so uh, as I said, right? You can get them from the uh, um, definitely type dot org, and there is support for uh, support in the NuGet package manager for dot net uh, or not dot net, but Visual Studio you can say that. And uh, I think in the Bower, Bower is another package manager, right? So you can get get them there as well. And it is it is. Uh, constantly it is updating. You will see that most of the check-ins are like days ago, not months or years. Um, and those are not uh, versions. If you go inside that, you will find uh, uh, versions. There was a uh, definition for why. Sorry? There was a one definition for why you are. This one? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so here it is clearly specified this particular definition on this head is based on uh, is for this particular version of the UI, UI. Yeah, then I think you can uh, whoever is maintaining the uh, link, right? Yeah, yeah, you can see the history of this if you want. Uh, but yeah, you wanted me to open this. Oh, that's fine. I was just you know, curious to think, thinking one more thing because most of the JavaScript frameworks started coming like in you know, a module based field. Right? Mm -hmm. So, probably for example, why you like we start using this one, mm -hmm. but with uh, in real production or maybe in uh, testing, right? We, we just use specific module of YUI. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you a rough example, right? So, maybe my my uh, code with broken the TypeScript is using some extra modules. Mm -hmm. so it's not so you will see that if if your the definition file that you are 
You no, say it's a very generic word. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, nobody can go and you know create so many person of the same uh, framework. Right? Right. So I, if I want to choose only a couple of modules, a couple of UI gadgets from one job, I try it. But this definition file will have all of them. Yes. Provided by this supported by this specific person, right? Correct. So I was just having the rough guess that you know my developers. Because they will start thinking that you know they can use any module, any case, mm -hmm. and so on. But when we are dealing, including in the SQL page, yes. So what you can do is you can you can edit this definition file so that, for example, I don't want this function to be available, right? I can just remove it from the definition file. And it won't be available for uh, your TypeScript compilation. So, so all these files we have to download it locally, and we can make our own local versions. And while building, you know, yeah. real JavaScript, we will simply pass those. Code. Yes, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, but package managers are becoming more intelligent to keeping track of various versions and uh, uh, only downloading them when it is required. <laughs> yes. So this is definitely type. I think go to TypeScript lang dot uh, You can just play with it online if you don't have any fancy editor. So there are many different types of browsers. If I search for Angular, they are maintaining different for individual applications. Chris, I think you know, good to know that we can also go and update it. Yes, you can also go and update it. But you have to then make sure that that definition file itself is valid. If you just remove it and then there are errors in the definition yeah. file, you will have to add that back. So, for example, let me go Angular JS, yeah. and th there's a legacy folder which has all the legacy Angular definition files. So, yeah, uh, let's see this uh, playground. Okay, so here you can write whatever you want, and then it will be available for you to play with. So, uh, for example, let's say I want to create class. Yeah, uh, not session, but let's call it a talk. Yeah, and you will see that this is the JavaScript that ultimately it just creates a function and this talk function, another this function. Yeah, and let's say if it has a, a property called a speaker. So, right now there is no meaning of it in the JavaScript unless you start using it. So, okay, another good feature of uh, um, TypeScript is you can create properties in the constructor itself as a constructor argument. So, what this will do is the meaning of this is. The, the whenever you are creating new talk, it takes a speaker, and this speaker will automatically be created, uh, be created getters and setters over here. There will be getters and setters for this speaker. You don't have to say this dot speaker is equal to the value that we just come out. And when you uh, when you start using that particular variable, then only it will appear in your uh, JavaScript. It won't create unnecessary JavaScript for the things which are not even getting used. Um, and then I can simply have uh, a method uh, open, okay, which yeah, and you can access this dot speaker or anything like that. So you will see that whenever I created a open function, it it added that function on the prototype of that talk function. So if you if you wanted to write this uh, JavaScript, which is uh, as given in the JavaScript Good Parts book, it will take it, you you can make mistakes while writing this kind of code, right? But here it's really simple because we are used to writing Java code. And when you want to create new talk, you just say new. 
yeah but here you will see that it is showing me an error because i did not provide it the parameter which is required for the constructor so i'll provide a speaker and then i can safely create this object now when you try to access this particular member because of the statically type nature you will immediately get intelligence saying what are the available members on this particular object and what is the function so it has an open function and a speaker mem mem member available if i try to do something extra on it it will show me an error that who does not exist on the talk in this uh, static help and the help will also query for modules so uh, yeah because this the, the error which is coming right that you see that is coming from the compiler so any editor which is using the typescript compiler can show you that particular help uh, or the error message <coughs> any 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 doubt any questions so far because we 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 when what whatever i wanted to talk about is usually is is finished but if you want me to demonstrate it on on uh, i can demonstrate it even further that what is the exact say that you say that file and this is the task for the user yes so you can see the memory depending on the console side correct so uh, let me run one uh, So, okay, let's let's take this example. I am clicking so many things. Okay, so we have this code over here, right? And this is my main file. Oh, come on. Uh, so let me start compiling these things. Okay, to do that. go to that particular folder and start the server uh, so i am i am adding i am adding a watch task over here so that whenever my files change it is going to compile the typescript uh right and it has also started a server yeah you will see that now here Uh, uh the code which was written in the main class which is getting executed from my ins file is getting executed so i'm only printing out the messages from that particular file over here yeah which is bird.move bird.fly and then human.move and you will see that it is printing the output according to that okay now let's see if i want to debug this particular java script Okay, so I'm calling uh, move on the board. Yeah. So <coughs> my final output is this main JavaScript file, which is one one JavaScript file compiled out of all of those files. You can specify compiler. Do you want to either have one file or you want to have multiple separate file? But uh, uh, I wanted to pro show the debugging probability. That's why I am. uh generating one file and this something is wrong here i guess so 
so you will see that my controller has generated uh, three kind of files for each ts file one is the js uh, one is the js file okay other is the map file okay what is this map file is this map file is being used by all the modern browsers to to tell that whatever the source that you are going to see from this file the uh, uh, it is located at this place okay and the mapping for that source is this now i don't i don't understand what this language is but somehow it allows browser to map between the the uh, code in this main file okay and the code in the generated javascript file <coughs> now i will have to read more about how this source mapping work but it works so let me show you how um, okay let's say our animal or yeah. let me generate the output again okay i'm going to delete this folder okay i will just come on I should not upgrade my Sublime version. Now I want it to trigger the compilation. Okay, I'll do it from here itself. Okay, it is compiling it. You will see that it has generated the JS. Okay. Yeah, it has created this main script file. and then this is the map file and you will see that it has mapped to all those different ts files yeah now let me open it here oh yeah i haven't started it you will see that in this uh, uh, when chrome did not fetch any of the ts file yet okay it only got this main script dot js file and the main script dot map file excuse me now i want to debug a particular file <clears throat> so what i will do here is i will go click on any other file any file which is i have mapped this folder in my chrome okay uh let me go to my main file and let me put a breakpoint here yeah i have mapped it into in, into this chrome developer tool okay. that particular physical folder can you help us navigating how can we do this huh? how can i how can we do this as in the present folder i want to map it here yeah, you can map many folders in chrome there. no no uh, so this is this mapping right i went to uh, uh, chrome and i said i want to map this particular folder at folder to workspace i just added the folder the physical location of those folders right uh, and then I, because would breakpoint if i try to execute it it should get hit one more set memory that's strange Is it not executing it properly? Let me remove the folder. Try again. Yeah. Okay, now I see source TS over here, right? And you will see that in the main uh, main .ts file, our breakpoint has been hit. So based on the information given in the source map, Chrome understood where I can find my sources, and it got this folder automatically in my Chrome Developer Toolbar, which is source slash TS.
yeah and then it map the code which was in the main js file to this actual typescript files and then i am able to debug it over here when you added the ds folder to the workspace then chrome recognized that no no that was something uh, uh, i did wrong i should not have added that and that's why i removed it and now chrome automatically went and fetched this source file so let's say because of the mapping yeah because of the mapping file in the previous saying that you know chrome is downloading uh, many files yeah. for a single source file as well as type um, yeah but it will only download it when you want to debug it so this was another thing i wanted to show right so let's say we did not have any we don't have any break point anywhere right we are not debugging anything mm -hmm. and now if you see the my the network tab and let me load and you will see that i have break point only in bird and that's why it has only loaded the bird ts file not all other ts files Can you go to source and open the PS file, and you can come back to network. Yes, when you ask it to open, right? It it will automatically automatically come there. So here it has now loaded main dot PS file. So it is not prematurely fetching all the files. It is only when uh, based on the need. And this mapping, uh, I mean, because it's a JavaScript and we can use it in any web server. Yeah, yeah. Any web server, right? Yes. So for example, now let me open this in my. Firefox. You will be able to get the same functionality in all the modern browsers. My question was more related to: Is it only supported by Node.js, or it will be working in any web browser? Any, 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 any server, any web server. Node is just I'm using so that I could. Uh, I wanted to do something more, but I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you see the net tab of Firefox, it just got the main dot uh, script file. Uh, and in the JavaScript, uh, hang on, I'm not used to this, but you should be. Able to. Yeah, so in the script, strange. So I'll have to figure out why, uh, how to do it in Chrome as well. But yeah, you can do it in Chrome because source map file is a very pretty good standard. And then you can get that. How is it generated? So it's generated by. So, by no. uh, so, so uh, 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 we told the compiler to generate that. Okay, now let's go into other details, like how you can. What are the different options that you can configure in the compiler? So this guy. Or maybe can you help me? Like, uh, assume that you know I have a fresh laptop. Uh, how can I go ahead and start using type uh, script? Yeah. So. You can uh, for that there are you can install TypeScript using the TypeScript tools uh, uh, on them using the npm packages as well as the TypeScript compiler uh, and that's it. So you need only these two things: TypeScript compiler and TypeScript tools. Compiler can be indep uh, independent, but the TypeScript tools which supports the additional facilities is uh, installed on the node. And then I'm using here Grunt to execute my TypeScript compilation, and this is the configuration for that compilation, which is I'm telling it where are my TypeScript files, okay? Um, what reference file to generate? Tell you. We'll talk about this uh, after a while. Uh, then where is the output of my TypeScript file? So I want. So because I want it to generate in one file, I specified the actual file name. But if you specify the output dir dir directory, it will generate the Uh, uh, dip multiple JS files for each TypeScript file. Then uh, this is the watch target. If you wanted to continuously compile and keep watch on it, but the watch which comes with this grunt task didn't work properly. That's why I'm using the separate, different mo watch module. Um, then uh, This is the ECMAScript version that you want to target. So, for older browsers who does not understand ECMAScript five, you can still compile to old the ECMAScript three. And when ECMAScript six becomes standard, you can compile to ECMAScript six. When you say that uh, ECMAScript three, it will always run in a text. Yeah. 
So it will output whatever is generated is sigma script three output. Um, then what is the what kind of modules are you using? So I'm not using any module uh, which are external modules. Uh, that's I'm using. The, that's why I have not configured it. Then source map. I'm asking it to generate the source map, and then I'm asking it to generate the declaration files as well. And remove comment is something uh, uh, which is so you. Will, for example, this reference, right? So there are some pre-compiler, preprocessor directives that you can use in the TypeScript files, and then you can ask it to remove those comments and preprocessor from the generated output. Okay, um, uh, and if and that's how it generated the the map file for all my output. Okay. Let me see if I can provide the provide the syntax JavaScript syntax. Yeah, but as soon as I do that, then it becomes one long modified file. Same thing with uh, you can here ask it to minify the the generated output as well. You can run another minification phase over it. But this is the generated output, and that was the source. And this is the definition. So let's see. We, we are building in a, a, a multiple projects are working together. I am also working on one module. He is also working on another module. Uh, so we both can only talk to the declaration file. Don't have to worry about each other's implementation. We both can work on each other's code separately, and we can give uh, we can share our declaration files. So this is the declaration file for the code that we wrote. Cool. So yeah, you once once you have this code in place, right? That's I need to fix this. Huh? Uh, yeah, I'll push that. This is another uh, uh, code that I wrote on Visual Studio. Okay, this is using Express and Node.js, and here I am using TypeScript on the server side. That was the example of purely using it on the client side. This is the example of using it on the server side. So I have my uh, uh, controllers, my Mongoose user model. So everything the code that you are seeing is, is a TypeScript code. And here I am using the type definitions from Mongoose, from Express, and you will see that I I, I get the uh, uh, type into lessons. Not here, it's the dynamic model. But let me let's say request or response. So response, I am telling that what is the type of response? Is Express not response, but I have not specified any type on the request. Okay. So when I try to get any information about the request, I don't know what it is. It's just some dynamic stuff. If you try to hover over it, the type of it is any, yeah. And then uh, for response, I know what is the type of response, right? So I get all the uh, available method on the uh, response, and it's the documentation about what does it do, yeah. So as well as what are the uh, argument does it expect. There are examples, so they, all the documentation from that library is available here. Yeah. Yes. You won't be confused while using those libraries now. Yes. And, and you are saying what your input that you are passing to is at least getting checked by the compiler. You are not passing argument in the wrong order. Uh, yeah, you can have it. And I mean, do they have friend there? Yes, yes. That's how we got the information about response, right? Okay. Because response is the express object. Okay. Um. Uh, uh, let's say. 
so i am importing the mongo module like this over here yeah i can get information about it <coughs> what are the different method available on that mongo module right so it's so easy you don't have to go and read the documentation but all, you also know about the number of arguments what are the option argument if there is any default value or default value this is also so pretty handy yes idea ultimate but there are uh, they are also building it for the community edition but they always want to catch uh, some money right so they first go to uh, it goes first goes to ultimate and then comes it to community uh, we have the support for sublime as well but somehow my sublime is broken at the moment but if you uh, if you install sublime plugin called as t3s or better type script you will get these pictures in sublime as well uh, you have it for eclipse there is a uh, 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 there's another plugin for Eclipse which does all this syntax highlighting, type checking, and compilation for TypeScript. <coughs> and I can I can easily uh, I mean I can see that all the code that I'm writing here, right, is much more clean now. And um, in the in the future versions, what they are trying to do is they are uh, if is any of you aware of asynchronous uh, programming in C sharp? So, uh, for example, let's say, for, okay, let's say this is find by id, right? This is a function, and assume that this is a, uh, this is a asynchronous function. So right now, what, and that's why we have to pass it a callback, and then whenever that function is complete, it is going to going to return invoke that callback. But with the new features, uh, uh, what you can do it in TypeScript is uh, this is your let's say this is your uh, result is equal to user dot model dot find by id, okay, and then you will give it some uh, some id, and you can only tell it to wait until the result comes, and then it's going to return the result back to you. Yeah, no, it is not. So this is called. This is how you do asynchronous programming in C sharp. Yeah, you don't have to say callback and then promise and promise and promise and promise. So what happens in C sharp is uh, as soon as the control sees that it's uh, waiting for something, thread immediately returns from there and start doing something else. Whenever the result comes, it uh, uh, the the invocation models then gives the handle back to that thread, which was. Initial executing this, and then your execution continues beyond this point. So it's it's too easy in C sharp, and they are trying to bring the same thing in Java in TypeScript. So that way you don't have to. Uh, the asynchronous programming will become much much beautiful. I won't say easier, but beautiful. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not much aware about Mongo JS. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering because we just saw a demo where we we were able to debug and everything using Pro, uh, and then we were yes. able to you know put a stopwatch and something, and we can say how uh, this uh, X will be helpful to debug in server side. So, so that particular feature, right? That was again provided by Pro. That is something exclusively that particular Chrome develop web development tools are providing. Uh, but as we saw that with the source map, we can. Do the debugging on the client side. You can similarly do. You should be able to do it on the server side as well. Uh, but I don't think that that feature is yet supported in the Chrome for TypeScript or. Maybe like Node.js or anybody else. Or you never get. No, I didn't. I didn't do that. I mean, I haven't done extensive Node program. Chin, my have you? Uh, are you aware of this? Is like you're actually doing your mindset because you're doing the problem. So probably this one has source mapping. As long as you're allowing the mapping, yes, from TypeScript to Java, as long as there is a way in TypeScript and the client, I think we should we should do it. We can still do this. There's no new tool or nothing to do it. Exactly. If you should go and listen to everything, it should be. Let me see if I can do. Uh, 
let's me so let me start my mongo and then let me open it in chrome and let's see if it is generating any source maps i don't think it is generating it so uh, yeah it, it is generating the source maps uh, so let's see if we can debug it I have put breakpoint in my login method. Yeah, so I am in my breakpoint. Yeah, so I can see information about what does request contains, uh, what was my uh, everything I can, I can see over here. And see, I can I can come here. I can even inspect what is inside my request body. I can even step in. So all these features. Are available here as well. Maybe because you exported it directly from the Visual Studio. That's why. Yeah, because I wanted to debug from there, right? Ah. So I have attached my debugger. So I am now using Visual Studio as my debugger rather than Chrome being my debugger. Right. What you did is just did a call, right? Yeah. Just did a call to the server and you get that breakpoint. Yes. Because my debugger was attached uh, on that code. If you see here, not here. Okay. Not somehow I don't know what Visual Studio did because I don't know the internals of it. But if it was Java, we would have to go the company again. Okay. Okay. I'm assuming similarly with the script with the JavaScript engine, there would be a debug there. Otherwise, how you are able to put a yeah. debug in the browser? So I, I think that might be a standard. So the server is running in uh, this one time. You know, no, no, server is server is express. Yeah. So server is running uh, no, no, yeah. so, so this is my server, right? And you will see that the debugger is listening on this port. So oh, yeah. any debugging tool now connect to this port and get the information. So thank you guys. I, I, I hope this was helpful in some way and you will start using TypeScript because it will be easier. Yeah. Uh, I mean, initially while starting, you said that you know uh, so many different frameworks are there like CoffeeScript and uh, uh, TypeScript and so on. So I'm just wondering you, in case you get a chance to compare. Yes. So so uh, I think CoffeeScript came what three four years uh, back. I'm not sure, but I tried to learn it once, and the output that it generated was not made for months. I mean, at least I couldn't read it. Uh, so I, I gave up on that. And I know you. There might be many copy script fans here, but I, I never liked it. And that's why I didn't see any of our projects which were happening here. They are not using TypeScript. Uh, I try. I have used JWT once, and that was even worse than copy script. Uh, that was for aliens, completely. Uh, uh, or people from Google who are really really intelligent. Uh, uh, but I couldn't work with that as well. So that's why all our projects are now using uh, plain JavaScript. But now I'm, uh, we are now learning about this new TypeScript language. So we will use it 
in our future projects. How friendly it was for you to include, you know, playing with multiple JavaScript framework and. Uh, uh, to be frank, I did not, I did not compare them side by side. No, I'm not. I'm just giving you one scenario, like you know, uh, you are using uh, some JavaScript framework or UI, right? yeah. and then you know, there is so many other frameworks which help you creating you know quick syntax or something like that. And initially, you, you probably your project was using that, and finally you decided that we should start writing TypeScript because it's like more like object oriented that you know, it's neat, clean, and yeah. easy to debug, easy to write also. I would mm -hmm. say. So, have you got a chance or you started from scratch uh, Yeah, I started from scratch. I, mean, I, I didn't really uh, compare what will be the migration track from one framework to another framework. But yeah, I help. Uh, um, so, what I did is as for an exercise, I had a pro complete JavaScript project and then I decided now I want to migrate this project TypeScript. And it was damn simple because um, it is just super set of JavaScript. So, if all my code was still valid and I could do incremental type addition into my code rather than changing whole code at once. Well, find some bugs which are uh, yes, yes, in <laughs> fact in fact yes that was uh, that was a finding when we when me and my pair were doing that exercise, we found a bug which were which we did not realize when we, we uh, had JavaScript in place. So and that made me even love types more. Yeah, and so I mean, it's kind of, uh, I mean, uh, with the, like, uh, I think even existing JavaScript project also I can use it because in the current, I can add a task to say yeah. that look up all the TypeScript files and compile it. Yes. So that, you know, uh, some people who are interested can write a TypeScript. Mm -hmm. yeah, they can write JavaScript. JavaScript. So, yeah, you, you can take that incremental migration approach. Uh, you don't have to change your tools, you don't have to change uh, your tactics, you don't have to learn something radically new, you don't have to learn new syntax. That's why it's easy uh, to migrate to JavaScript projects. And <clears throat> many, many big projects are now migrating to TypeScript because when you're working with large teams, it becomes easy to handle errors at compile time only, and it stops you from uh, getting many bugs in the production cycle. So you will find many, many, uh, many game engines which are written in JavaScript. They are getting migrated to TypeScript. Uh, many uh, uh, mathematical libraries which were there, they are not big, They are getting migrated to TypeScript. So there are many examples out there. Give it a try if you like it. Use it. Or there will be another framework just in just a couple of years. I am sure JavaScript uh, has that power uh, 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 or traction that people, whenever someone start thinking about creating new, they will create something new in JavaScript. It's so easy to do something in JavaScript, right? Right. Either it could be small kids or uh, a mature person. Next version of JavaScript Yes, which is XMAScript 6. But that is still not having uh, st statically yeah, typed. Yeah. yeah. So you will be having interfaces, you will be having extents, implements, class, all those things that we saw here, right? People love JavaScript because they don't have to create a class or it's yeah. basically for pressures. Right. And they start using Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.